Hey everybody, how are you guys? I am super excited to bring you guys a jam-packed call tonight. Hopefully I don't lose the connection here. Let me see if I can get my phone in a nice spot. And I will wait for you guys to all get on and join live with me. I took a shower for you guys. You guys should be so proud of me. Um, Alright, so I see three people. There's Shay. Hey girl, you guys are getting on. All right, so hey guys. All right, so I um, let's see, is my connection good? Hold on, let me just try to go into another room. Although I'm not gonna have that pretty background like Shay has. It might be okay. If I have to move, then we'll move mid mid time. I got three kids. I'm good at this. Okay, so I am gonna bring you guys tonight some tips about. Kind of went on like a little memory lane while I was preparing this for you guys about you know treating your business like a business and. I, I'm going to apologize first because I might get a little emotional. I might cry on you guys. I was kind of talking about this with my team earlier today. And before you know it, like, I was just kind of bawling, like, mid-sentence. Um, because what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight is just really, really important to me. And, you know, we see all these things happening in the network, right? You see coaches, like, worrying that their volume isn't high enough or that, coach recruitment is down and they're suggesting like different programs and you know maybe it's just the way that you work on social media and all of these things and so I want to tell you guys this um, you know when I first started this business the only reason why I started this business is because of the death of my grandfather so my grandpa passed away from heart disease and diabetes I watched him die was sat at his bedside for um, two and a half weeks and I was a nurse before this so I was a nurse for 15 years hey Julie hey Jamie so I was a nurse for 15 years before I became a beach body coach I learned about the challenge groups that's the only reason why I decided to become a beach body coach. I had done Insanity, uh, a rip burn copy, and that was really my only, only really experience. I had no idea about coaching. I had no idea that I was going to be building a team. I knew none of that. But what I did know was that um, we have a huge epidemic, you guys. A huge, huge epidemic right now that is not getting better. Okay? And... Obesity, heart disease, diabetes, those things should be going down, right? But they're not, you guys. They're not going down. And actually, last year, it went and it bumped up a little bit, okay? And so when we sit here and we worry about, you know, volume or people not recruiting or anything else, I think that we all need a gentle reminder of why you signed up to be a coach in the first place. Um, you are here because either Beachbody, the programs changed your life, or because you care about other individuals or the health of this country that you want to make a difference. Okay? That is why you're a coach. I don't care if it's because, um, you know, you want to stay home with your kids or you want to um, create residual income. The point of this business is all People helping people. And I think that it's really important that we focus on that, you guys, because that is the core mission and value of what we do as coaches. And I feel like we've lost that. I feel like we've lost the core reason of why we are a Beachbody coach. Okay? So I want you to think about that. I know oftentimes I tell my team, like, we're all here to help people, but I want you to dig a little bit deeper. Okay? But that core mission, that core value of why we're here, you guys, is because we are here to help other people, okay? That's why we're here. And when you think about that, and you think about that applying to this to your business, you guys, it makes everything you do that much less scary, okay? So if you're inviting people just to hit success club, if you're inviting people because your coach said, you know, invite 10 people because that's what you have to do, I want you to stop a second and I want you to think about this mission that we are on. 
We have a much bigger purpose and a much bigger battle that we are trying to achieve here. And each person behind that invite is somebody. It's a person with a life, with a story that has a connection, that has problems. Maybe they don't have a supportive family at home. Maybe they've struggled with um, their own weight loss issues forever. Maybe there's somebody like me that has struggled with anorexia and bulimia for nine years of my life. You know, all of these people, you guys, are are people. And so I want you guys at the end of this call to realize that you are here to change people's lives and what you are doing and what you are a part of is absolutely incredible. And you should never, ever be ashamed for what you're doing. And I'm going to probably start to cry. Hold it all together because I'm just getting started. But it's so incredible, you guys, what we do. And so when you think about that, like when you think about like sh like sharing and like inviting people, like if you were running, um, say that you were doing like a charity event, I guarantee if you were doing a charity event for something that was near and dear to your heart, you would be telling all of your friends. You would be telling all of your coworkers about what it is that you guys are doing, right? I mean, nothing would be holding you back from that. So why is it any difference when it comes to coaching, when it comes to what we do in our challenge groups, why does that hold you back when what you do is absolutely life changing, you guys, life changing. We make an impact by one person because you know why? Our government doesn't make an impact and our healthcare system does not make an impact on the global level that we are able to do as Beachbody coaches. And that sucks, but that is the absolute reality and that's the hard truth. Okay, so what we do, it is it is our mission. It is something that we are responsible for doing. And when you sign up to be a coach, I hope that you understand that. It's like you guys are taking an oath that you are going to grab onto other people and that you are going to make sure that every single person matters and that they are aware of what your mission is. And that's really how I got started in this journey. I had no business experience. I had a hundred friends on Facebook, but I wanted to make a difference. And I knew by just from the patients that I had worked with that I could send them home with a great diet plan to follow and all the medications that they needed. But if they didn't have the support, if they didn't have the motivation, guess what? They were going to be another statistic. They were going to be back in my hospital bed three months, maybe a month later. Um, and so that's why like what we do within our challenge groups is such a big deal because people need that support. People need that accountability. People need to know like, girl, I got your back. I'm here for you. I'm going to do whatever I possibly can do to help you. Okay. And so that's what we're a part of. And I just want to say, I really hope that that helps you take away uh, that fear of inviting, that fear of growing your team, because you can't do it by yourself. I tried. I had no intentions whatsoever of growing a team when I started my business at all. And then I realized, like, man, I have a lot of work to do. And if I don't grab hands and grab hold of people that have like-minded um, goals and dreams like I do, then I'm never going to achieve what I want to achieve. And so you guys are all a part of that. And I want to empower you guys to not only reach out on you know a community level, a national level, but you guys to reach out on a global level and like scream from the rooftops about what you're doing. Because it's a huge, huge thing that we're doing here, and I really don't take this lightly. So I just kind of wanted to talk about that right there, um, because that is, to me, is the catalyst of how I got my business started. So one tip, number one, is that I went public, okay? Like, basically what I'm doing to you guys right now, I went absolutely public with what it was that I was doing. How did I do this? Obviously, this girl that had 100 friends on Facebook decided that she was going to open up her Facebook public, right? But then I also decided that I was going to take it into where I worked. So I started to bring in like clean recipes into my um, work where I worked at and I would bring in like little shopping lists and stuff for them. You guys, I was like, I don't need necessarily social media to get this started. I'm just going to show people that I'm making a difference and here's what I'm doing and I want to invite people along with me. Okay. Uh, the other thing is that because I wanted 
everyone to know about what I was doing. I had learned a tip early on as a coach, um, and it was the A to Z method um, that I learned from Brigitte Linford. And so I basically went through my, you know, my 100 people that I knew on Facebook, and I started at A, and I went down to Z. And I went all the way from A to Z, and every day I invited and I shared what it was that I was doing with other people. Um, I wasn't afraid because, you guys, I'm here to change people's lives. Like, what is so, so scary about that, right? I'm here to make a difference. There's nothing messy or icky about that. When you're here to help people and that is what your intention is, people can feel that on the other side. So I went through my A to Z left, my Z list, and I basically told everybody that I was, what I was going to do and the reasoning behind it and the challenge groups that I was running. And you guys all have a reason and a story for why you guys um, are a coach. You all have a reason on why you're invited to your challenge groups. It's not just for a number. It's not just because your coach, you know, told you to do that, right? There's a reason and there's a big purpose behind that, okay? And then I was like, okay, three weeks into my business, I'm like, I have my 100 friends on Facebook. This is not going to do what I want to do. So I decided that I was going to start a Facebook business page. So I started a Facebook business page three weeks into becoming a coach. Um, and I, because I was busy, so I was in school for my nurse practitioner at the time. I had my three kids at home. I was still working full time as a nurse. I decided that I was just going to schedule my posts on my like page. But the whole reasoning why, so if you guys kind of want to see my vision on this, was because I had to get over my bubble, right? I couldn't just rely on my 100 friends that I had on Facebook that was going to, you know, maybe we could do something together, but we weren't going to do this like global massive effort that I really wanted to accomplish. And so that's the whole reasoning why I started a Facebook like page so that I could expand and reach people on a global, on a global level and share my mission of what it was that I was doing with people, right? Cause that's what we're here to do. Like, if you want to really impact, if you're here because you want to change the lives of other people, then your word, your mission has to get out. You got to be public and you got to make sure that you're going global, right? So that's what I did. And then my post, so I was like the worst student you guys could say when it comes to um, being in like a coach training. I, Melanie Mitro was my coach. You guys know she's an amazing teacher. I was like the worst. I didn't pay attention. I just kind of like went on my own way and I was just trying to figure things out until she was like, whoa, girl, and like try to bring me back in. But for my like page, I basically was like, okay, so what can I share with people that's going to make a difference to end this trend of obesity, right? What kind of recipes can I share? What kind of tips can I share? What kind of, um, you know, motivation and drive can I share? What kind of statistics can I share? What can I share to end this mission of ending the trend of obesity? And I think that we have complicated this. We have completely complicated this with posting schedules and Tasty Tuesday and post this on Monday and we have overcomplicated what we do on social media and it has caused maybe even you to get so confused that you're like, oh, I don't know what day it is, I don't know what to post, I'm trying to follow the schedule. No, keep this simple, you guys. Keep this simple to where you are sharing your message, you are sharing tips that are going to help the overall mission of ending the trend of obesity. Okay, keep this simple. So if you don't have a like page already, I want to give you a reason why, because you're not going to impact the people that you want. You're not going to make those connections that you want to unless you get outside your bubble. Now, a lot of new coaches will probably say, start on your Facebook page. You know, you have friends there, you have a warm market. I'm not telling you not to do that. What I am telling you to do is to start something else as well. Because what happens is a lot of people's code market or war market runs out and now what? Who is getting your message? Okay, so if you're like me and you're like, I want to get my message out, that was the whole reasoning on starting a like page. Okay, so keep your like page simple. But the reason behind that is to go on a global method. And I believe that that is what really expanded my brand um, so very quickly. Now, the um, point four. So I started my team my first month as a coach. So I was out there, I was inviting, I was telling all these people about the challenge group I was running, I was like so excited. And then Melanie is like, hey girl, um, you might wanna go Emerald. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I have no idea 
what she's talking about whatsoever. And she's like, well, do you like want to grow a business? And I'm like, yeah, well, do you want to grow a team? And I'm like, well, not really. I mean, I just want to run challenge groups. I had no desire to run a team. I didn't even know the psycho bonuses. I didn't know all that. And I know when I signed up to do this call, I was going to talk to you guys about growing your team. Well, I want to tell you guys all the things I'm going to talk about now are business building tips and why I decided to build a team. And it was basically because I just realized that Okay, if I could teach Susie and Susie could teach Sally how to run challenge groups, now instead of us having one person in my effort, we have three people in my effort to end the trend of obesity. Okay, so every single person that I recruited and was bringing onto my team, that was the whole reasoning behind that. It wasn't because I was trying to get to some rank in the company or anything like that. It was because of my mission of if I teach this person what to do and how to run a successful challenge group and I get them results, then they're going to pay it forward to somebody else and then that person's going to want to do it. And before you know it, we have 9,000 people on my team that are now all doing the same thing. Okay, so if you're scared to, you know, invite people to coaching, I want to know why. I want to know why you're scared to do that because you're not going to have the impact that you want to make if you're not adding people onto your team. Okay, so and that was the reason why I decided to do that. All right, so the other part about, um, you know, treating your business like a business, you guys, I think that it's important. I showed up every single day to my business, every day. And I can't tell you one successful business out there where the business owner isn't showing up. Somebody has to open up the doors, right? Say you went to Whole Foods tomorrow and all of a sudden the doors were closed because the owner didn't decide that they wanted to sleep in, they didn't want to offer you their organic goods, and they decided that they were going to take the day off. Your business is closed, okay? So every day I looked at that analogy and I was like, I got to keep my doors open. I have to know that people know what I'm doing. I'm still here. I'm still here to help them. Okay. I never wanted them to think that I lost sight of my mission and my drive and what it was that I was doing here. And that's the same thing. You need to treat your business like a business. You need to open up those doors every single day and keep them open okay now i'm not saying there's sundays there's days that i you know don't work as much there's days that i might put just a couple of hours in but you will believe that i have not ever not posted on social media one day since i became a coach i pulled up and i posted at least daily i showed up because it's my business, right? You have to show up to your business. And I think that that's the difference. If you have a hobby mentality or you have a business mentality is that if you want to build trust in people, you have to have that business open because I've been to those stores where I don't know when they're open. And guess what? I stopped going to those stores because I couldn't figure out in my mind where they closed on Sunday or Monday or what day are they open, how late are they open. And so I go to the stores that I know are open, right? And that's the same thing that has to go with your with your business as well. You have to show up daily um, and open up your business, okay? All right. Next page for your loves. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so for you guys, I just want to say, so I was busy. I'm sure you're all busy. I attract a different market than maybe you guys do. I know my upline Mel attracts a lot of, um, stay at home moms. I don't. I attract a lot of busy working professionals. My team is 90% nurses. Okay, so you guys know nurses work 12 hour shifts, sometimes it's 14, sometimes it's 15 hours. And so how did I grow my business with no time? I focused on just the business building behaviors, right? I focused on just getting my message out there. I focused on just inviting and sharing what it was that I was doing and working on myself through personal development and through my fitness. That is all I did. So maybe I wasn't the best person. I Maybe I didn't show up on all the calls um, live. Maybe I... Um, you know, wasn't like the best team member adding in comments and stuff like that. But you know what? I was focused on my mission and on doing the stuff that was going to grow my business. And I think that sometimes, you know, I didn't write like the best blog posts. My posts um, were far from great. Um, my pictures were not perfect. But I showed up, you guys, and I did the things that I had to do on a daily basis. And I think that oftentimes I'll see coaches that, you know, instead of inviting because they're scared, they'll go off and they'll write a blog post, right? Or they'll do a fancy video and like edit it in all different ways and it'll consume like three or four hours of their time, but yet 
Did that really build your business? No, it probably just added a little bit of value, added some tips, but it didn't really build your business that day. It didn't, you weren't building those relationships, right? You weren't really inviting, you weren't really adding to your network. Um, that is just more fluff. So for somebody like myself, I just really, really had to concentrate on building and doing the, and just doing the three vital behaviors. And so when we tell you guys that the three vital behaviors are what grows your business, that is your secret sauce. That is how, you know, people with no time build six-figure businesses. And it's just that consistency over time. So, yes, you're going to hear all these great tips and all these things from other coaches, you guys. But if you're not doing those three things, then you're going to miss something and your and the business is going to drop. So if you don't have a lot of time, make sure that you are doing those three things all the time and that you are being very, very consistent with what it is that you're doing. Don't you know say, oh, I'm working my business and I'm doing a blog post and I'm doing a video and I'm doing this, but you're actually not doing the work that you need to do. Um, I've seen it happen way too many times where coaches think that. And so I just want to say if you're doing that right now, you know, call yourself out on it because it's not what actually is growing your business. Okay, so I think that this is really important and I want you guys to know this. Leave something for everyone you talk to. Every single person that you talk to, when you have in mind that you are here to end the trend of obesity, you should be leaving them with something. If they cannot, for some reason, afford a challenge pack, then you should be offering them a program. If they can't afford a program, you should be offering them Beachbody On Demand. If they can't afford Beachbody On Demand, then you should be giving them a clean, some clean eating recipes or a meal plan or something to they, that they can take with them to help them on their journey. Okay, never talk to somebody and invite them to a challenge group. And if they say they can't afford it, you leave them with nothing because then you haven't found, you haven't done your part there. You guys, you haven't done your part. Um, you haven't helped impact that end of a trending of obesity that you can do. So keep ending the trend of obesity, always heart and center focus to what it is that you guys are doing. Okay. Um, red carpet treatment. Okay. I get on the phone, you guys might think I'm crazy, but I get on the phone with every single person that wants to join my team. Every single person. Why? Because I want to know if you guys are like me, um, your inbox is crazy, right? Your emails, who likes to check emails? Not me. When I was maybe, you know, 10, 12 years ago, let's say when I was in college and email was just coming around. Yeah, it was kind of fun to check email, but not now. For now, you guys, email to people is just a bunch of things that they have to erase or it is work. And so when somebody comes to me, and I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the way that I do this, but anybody that I am conversating, that having a conversation with, either about a challenge group or that I'm having a conversation with um, about coaching, I make them fill out an application. Okay, so that is one way that you guys can treat your business like a business. So I'm going to kind of walk you through here what it is that I do. I just use Wufu documents. They're free. Um, so if you guys are short on money, um, I have people apply so that I can learn more about them and that I have information already gathered. Okay, it's going to help a lot of times going back and forth in that conversation. But I take everything off of Facebook and I ask them, you know, here's the application and then I get the application into my email and I do everything through email. I only do like one or two emails with people um, and my goal is to get them on the phone with me. And why do I say that? Because so many people these days, you guys, shy away from doing business over the phone, but it is personal and that is what makes your business different than anybody else's out there. People that need help, they need to know that you are there to help them and that you care and that you are taking, you know, 15 minutes out of your day to actually listen to what they have to say, okay? So getting on the phone with somebody that maybe needs to lose 15, 20 pounds and talking to them about what their diet, you know, looks like right now, what kind of exercises they tried before, what they love to do, what they don't like to do, that personal touch is going to put your business lengths ahead of anybody else's before, besides just trying to like message things back and forth, okay? I do this with all of my coaches as well. Uh, and I make everybody apply that joins my team because I want to make sure that people that join my team understand my mission. And so I get on the phone with 
every single one of my coaches. Every single one of my coaches I get on the phone with. And I know um, this might not be your style, but I think that it's important that they understand why I became a coach, what it is that I'm doing, why I'm here, why I'm trying to um, you know, reach out and expand my message to other people. Your passion is going to be translated with getting on the phone with people. So if it scares you, I suggest you do it. It's going to save you so much time versus back and forth conversation with people who are not online all the time. You know, we run a, bo a business on social media, but when people check out at night, they might not be on social media. When people check out, they might not be wanting to check their emails. So you might have a lot of people there that potentially really want the help, but they're skimming through their emails and they're erasing things, they're erasing things quicker than that come in. And so I want you guys to be brave and get on the phone with people. It is going to set your business apart from people that don't. And you can really then dig into their why and get to understand what it is that they need, whether it is coaching or whether it is the challenge group. That is so important. And you guys know the whole business is about building relationships, right? So I think that getting on the phone made a big difference. And it's something that I did as a brand new coach. Um, taking that time to really listen to them, make sure that we're listening, you know, more than we're talking. It'll do a lot more like verbal diarrhea that way as well, okay? Um, let's see here. I talked to you guys about using the Foo apps. Um, using Acuity Scheduler. So your business, you guys, um, it will control you. The notifications on Facebook will control your whole entire life. You guys probably know that already. How many of you guys get sucked into the news feeds and you guys are wasting time going, okay, wait, I only have an hour or two to, to build this business, but I'm wasting it all because you're stuck scrolling the news feed. I'm going to tell you guys this. I don't really know what happens half the time on the newsfeed. I have no idea because my head is down and when I turn on Facebook, I'm either there to do a post, I'm either there to interact with my um, relationships that I'm building or I'm there to check into a group. So oftentimes I will do a personal check of myself before I open up my computer. What is my purpose? Why am I getting on, right? And what am I doing with this? And I've gotten in the habit of only working my business on my computer. Because otherwise, if I use my phone, I could be on it all the time. Okay, so I use Acuity Scheduler for that reason. You guys can have a money of the things you guys can use. But I block in, you know, when I'm going to do my um, personal development, when I'm going to do my workout, when is my family time, right? And then what time do I have available for calls? So that whenever I'm going to talk to somebody about coaching or about a challenge group, I can just send them my Acuity Scheduler and they can schedule a time that I've already pre-scheduled that works for them. And they can then schedule time to be able to talk to me, right? but it's not going to take away from my family time. It's not going to take away from other, from other times. Time, you guys, is the most important thing you have, and you are never going to get it back. Understand that. So when you give value, when you're talking to somebody and you're giving them information about your business or about a challenge group and you're offering that to them, people value that time. And that's why I think it's so important. If you are already respecting your time by using an acuity scheduler or by scheduling a phone, um, they are going to come into your business understanding that time is really important to you and that they are going to already have that reciprocal relationship of using, um, of using, of understanding your time. So Acuity Scheduler, uh, Kelsey, for you asking what the name of the scheduler is, I'll write up a little document for you guys of all the things that I talk about today um, so you guys can have them. But schedule your calls, use Acuity, Acuity Scheduler um, so that you guys have your days planned out. Okay. Somebody mentioned kill your newsfeed. I think that's a really, really great idea. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about using Facebook interest lists. Um, Facebook interest lists is the only thing that I use when I go on to my Facebook. Um, I have one for my coaches, so I can kind of look at what my coaches' posts look like. Um, and then I have one for all of my Beachbody customers that I've been able to find on Facebook. They go in one as well. And then I also have one for my um, coach prospects as well as my um, challenger prospects. So anytime that I add in, and you guys know I should be adding in at least five new people a day onto my social media, right? So anytime I'm adding in five people, they go into one of those lists. So that when I click on, say, my challenger prospects, 
that's the only people that are showing up on my newsfeed. And so then I can like and I can comment and I can build the relationship with that. And then I don't see a thousand coaches stuff in my newsfeed and I'm like trying to go back and forth. Um, so if you don't use coach, like Facebook interest list, Madonna, if you don't use them already, I highly, highly suggest it. Now I'm going to tell you guys, I am not a number of personality whatsoever, okay? I am a ruby, I am a sapphire, and I am a pearl, if you guys can't tell. Um, so that is what I am. So I'm not one of those people that does really well with um, using any other kind of system for organization because I'm just kind of like one of the people that like flies with what it is that I do. But using a coach interest list um, has been my savior or a challenger interest list has been my savior because... I mean, I want to scroll on Facebook, right? But now when I scroll on Facebook, guess what? I'm scrolling with people that I generally want to be building a relationship with. And so when I share with them what it is that I'm doing, then... um when I share with them what it is that I'm doing, I've been commenting, I've been liking, I've been um, already building that relationship with them just because I naturally would be doing this with my friends anyways on my Facebook newsfeed. So um, Facebook interest list, you guys look, Google it, I'll put directions, but just Google it and show you what to do. You guys can make interest lists for absolutely anything that you guys want to do. But then if you feel like you have to scroll the newsfeed, scroll that so that you're not wasting your time and what it is that you're doing is going to actually be building relationships in the business okay also builds infinity to your page with the people that you want to see your stuff so that's another um, tip that I wanted to share with you guys um, uh, la, 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 la. okay monthly newsletter so again um, I started pretty much my second month as a coach that I wanted to um, do a monthly newsletter okay why because maybe you guys are like me and you get these leads and they don't answer Okay, that's me. I tried to figure out how to get in touch with these my leads and I couldn't figure out how to do it. But I knew that they wanted help, right? And so I decided that I was going to send out a monthly newsletter. In my monthly newsletter, I just tell people about some recipes, any travel tips, um, you know, maybe about hydration. And then I also tell them about the groups that I'm running, any of the free groups that I'm running, um, any of the challenge groups that I'm running, also any of the uh, coach sneak peeks that I'm running. So I do this because I want to build relationships with my with my customers. They might not have ever, um, you know, maybe they're not responding to my emails or to my texts when I first message them, but the more value that I can add to them and the more that I can help them, the more that I know that I am going to help end that trend of obesity, right? So think about what you guys can do out in the community, out with the customers you guys already have, with your beach body customers to add in value into their lives. The newsletter, you guys, it takes me 10 minutes to whip that all together and send it out. Um, and I do it now through, um, oh, what the heck is my thing I use? I can't even think right now. Um, Aweber. See, I, I remembered. Um, I do it now through Aweber, but you guys, I just started using it through Aweber two months ago. I used to just send it all right through my Beachbody email. Um, so you guys don't have to buy like some fancy system to send out um, that information. And then yes, I, I talk about my coach opportunities as well, and I talk to my challenges as well. Now, here's the thing. I add a ton of value, though. It's not just, here's my challenge group, here's this. I add, you know, every month, they're used to me getting a ton of value um, from me, okay? So, and then at the end, I let them know about the different things that I'm running. Um, and I always get a really good feedback on that, and I always have a lot of people that become really interested um, in in what it is that I'm doing. I get applications. I attach my applications in there too. So for people that want in information about my challenge group, they get an application, uh, my coach, um, like three day sneak peeks or opportunity calls, any of that stuff, um, they get applications too. So I always get applications back every single month from somebody. You know, I probably get like four or five back. And that's just a really great way for you guys to keep adding value to people that you already know love the products. Find a way to stay connected to those people and just keep adding value that way. Okay, outsource. Um, I cannot, 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 cannot stress this enough. So I was a, um, I was a coach for six months when I got my first assistant. I did not have the money at the time, you guys. I was maybe making like $300, uh, maybe $300 a, 
a week um, at that time. So it's not like I had a lot of money to do this. But you guys, I realized that I'm not good at a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I'm not so good at. And so instead of me trying to learn things that I'm not good at, I decided that I was going to outsource and I was going to um, have people do things. So for example, my Facebook banner, I outsourced it, $10 through Fiverr. Okay, I did that. I got my assistant on board to help me schedule my posts into my challenge groups, okay, um, to help field some of the emails that were coming in. Um, she helped me make, like, little graphics. So I have, like, on my, like, a nerd fit nurse page, I have, like, little um, motivational quotes that have my logo on them. You know, stuff that, like, I could do, but it was really time-consuming, and I really didn't have time to do that. You guys, my assistant... I still have her to this day, and I absolutely love her, um, and she's gotten a, a raise since then. But when I started, you guys, she worked 40 hours a week for me, and I paid her $300 every two weeks, okay? There are a ton of assistants available for you. You do not need to spend a ton of money hiring assistant and outsourcing um, things that you're not good at or things that you don't have time to do. So I don't care where you're at in this business. To be able to grow, you have to have people helping you. Again, you can only do so much, you guys, right? You can only do so much. So it's the same thing with growing your business. You can only do so much by yourself, by not having a team. Um, and it's the same thing with hiring assistant or outsourcing some stuff. Um, because you can only do so much, you guys. So... I would definitely look into that. Now, think about that, you guys. If I hired an assistant for $300 every two weeks working 40 hours a week, um, that you could hire somebody for way less than that, okay? So that you can focus on doing what you're good at, right? I'm good at getting on the phone with people. I'm good at mentoring my coaches. I've got to be the one that does my team calls. I've got to be the one that helps out, you know, in my challenge groups and creates new ideas and creates content for my coaches. Nobody else can do that for me, but... I can have somebody else do the things that I don't necessarily have to do. Um, and I'm a type A person. I'm a perfectionist. I like to do things. But you know what? I've learned in this business that better um, done is better than perfect. Too many times I see people waiting for like all the information and they're like a collector of information and they're just like this like hoarder, right? And they just keep hoarding like all this stuff and then they never actually use it. Um, the one thing that I can tell you is just do it. You know, just do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, better is always, uh, done is always better when it comes to this business. Um, it's how you're going to move forward, okay? Um, okay, stay in phase one. This is um, something that I kind of talked about when we started this call, but I think that this is so, 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 so important. You know, when is the last time you've had your own physical transformation? When is the last time you had your own physical transformation, right? When is the last time that you had some kind of like aha moment from your personal development, right? When is the last time that you're out? Maybe you're focusing on all these other things about trying to make like a good training for your team. You're trying to do all these other things and then you forget about inviting, right? Or you forget, maybe you want to go on like this team retreat. And so you start thinking about like this team retreat and how you can get there and rank advancing. And you forget about the sole mission and purpose that you are a coach to end the trend of obesity. And I think that that, honestly, if I had to call it out, is why and is what is happening right now within our network. Um, everybody's kind of looking for all these ideas of, of what's going on. And I see all these posts about, you know, volume and rank advancements and all this stuff. And I honestly think that it is because maybe you are watching your coach. Maybe you're watching me and you're one of my coaches and you're like, well, okay, I don't know if her mission is to end the trend of obesity anymore because she is um, like traveling the world right now. She just went to Bora Bora on this amazing trip. I see her at home, right? I see her doing these things. And, you know, maybe her mission is more about freedom and it's really not about obesity. I'm going to tell you guys that every single 15-star diamond coach, their mission is to pay it forward. Their mission is to end the trend of obesity. So if you're seeing all like the flashy stuff and you're seeing what Beachbody has caused um, because of our lives, we wouldn't be here right now on this phone with you um, if, if, the, if ending the trend of obesity wasn't near and dear to our hearts. And so I thought about that recently with my own team of, 
you know, like, Maybe they think like I just like to travel a lot, right? Maybe they just think that, you know, this isn't really my purpose anymore. And I've stopped talking about Success Club being related to lives change because, duh, that's why I'm here. If you join my team, you know why I'm here and why I show up every single day, right? Um, and so I want you guys to just think about that. You know, your sole main purpose is not rank and dancing. It's not to be home with your kids. It's not to make a hundred thousand dollars. Yours is to end the trend of obesity point blank. And when you help other people, the rest of it will come. You guys, the rest of it will come. I promise it will come. I want you guys to think about this for a second before I go on. Cause this is something I'm just really, really passionate about, but our kids, you guys have a lower expectancy rating then you and I, our kids are going to, they are saying our kids are not going to be around to live a long, healthy, fulfilling life if the way that things just keep going on. Do you guys understand that? So this isn't about anything more. Carl Deichler, the call that he did um, two weeks ago um, to everybody in the wall, and then maybe your team like shared it with you, but you know, he said like, my job when I started this was not to make you rich. That's not why I started the coaching network. I started the coaching network to add support and to add motivation um, to our products. That's why it was started. So you might see other MLMs out there, you guys, that talk about the freedom and the finances and, and being home with your kids. And you guys, that is all wonderful. And that is all so, so, so possible. But don't ever take your eyes off of, of why you guys got started. Because I know that you guys all got started to change the lives of other people and to pay it forward because either what the products have done for you or because of... Um, or because you just believe in this, in ending this trend so, so very, very much. So I just want you guys to really, really focus on that. All right. Couple more tips and then I'll let you guys go. Um, okay. Sponsoring new coaches. Okay. You have to have, have to, you have to. Why? So what, why is this so, so important? It's not even just for the, uh, it's and the trend, right? We already talked about that reasoning, but why is it so, so important that you guys are sponsoring new coaches? Because like any business, have you walked into a business? Let's say you guys walk into your, um, I don't know, your grocery store. You might see some of the same people there, right? But at the same time, you guys see new people. You see new people coming and going, right? So you see new people coming and going because nothing is guaranteed, you can only control you in this business, okay? Businesses turn, life happens. And so you always have to be bringing in new people to your business. A business will not survive with, by not bringing in and replacing new people. It's so, so important that you guys do not get stuck in management mode in your business and that you do not get stuck on the people that are not going to move. Do not beat yourself up and say that I'm a bad leader because, oh, it's going to end. No, it's back. Okay. Um, so don't get upset about that. That is not your fault. If you are leading from the front, if you are ending the trend of obesity, if you are hitting success club every single month, if you are posting and growing yourself, then you are a good leader. You are a good leader and you cannot make anybody do something that doesn't want to do it, right? All you can do is lead from the front, but you got to bring in new people because they are your lifeline, right? They're like the Kindle to the fire, okay? So they all come in and they're all super, super excited and they wanna go out and they wanna end the trend of obesity and they wanna invite all these people and guess what? It brings all of that momentum back into your team. And then older coaches see, um, see your newer coaches coming in and taking off and they're like, oh, okay. And so then it lights them up too. So remember, Newer coaches, you guys, are the Kindle and are the lifeline of your business. You cannot not have people coming into your business, okay? You can tell yourself all the crap that you want to about this, but I'm telling you what. Do not get yourself to diamond and go into management mode and let everything fall backwards of what you worked so hard to build because all of a sudden you declare at that day that you become a leader, because you became a leader the day you signed up to become a coach and the day that you decided that you were going to take this on and end the trend of obesity, okay? So remember that, you guys. You do not become a leader when you become a diamond or a star diamond coach. You become a leader the day you sign up that you are a CEO of your business. 
That is when you become a leader, okay? And yes, I kind of get into preaching mode about that because it's important and I see too many of my coaches do that and go into management mode and, and feeling bad about bringing new people in and that's just, that's just bullshit lies, really? Okay, so, um, alright, hold on. Uh, okay. Okay, so your mission, you guys, your mission to do this, this is a big one, okay? You need to constantly be in pursuit of finding other people to catch your vibes. So you guys can probably tell I'm a high energy individual, meaning like I um, can feel other people's energy. So I can feel what other people are feeling. I'm very, very, very high. I know. I'm very, very high um, energy individual. And so when you guys are posting and you guys are sharing on social media, what you guys want to be focused on is growth at all times, right? You guys want to be focusing on how many more contacts can you guys have, working from that list, growing your social media following, having new coaches and new challengers joining your business. And the reason being is because that is growth. That is more people that you're able to reach. And we are on a global level, right, guys? We're not working in this small um, community focus. You guys are out to change the whole trend and the trend of obesity. So that is really, really important. Um, success club, before I go. Success club. So, how many of you guys tell yourself you didn't hit success club one month and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, that wasn't so bad that I didn't hit it. Now I don't have to hit it this month because the pressure's kind of off. I was going for like three or four months and I hit it, but I didn't hit it and the, and the world didn't end. I want to tell you guys something right now. You are doing a disservice to the people around you if you are not inviting and sharing and hitting success club. I will be very honest with you about that. You have a job, you have a responsibility as a coach to be sharing this with other people, and Success Club is just that. It is the lives that you have impacted and the lives that you have changed in your mission. It is, okay? I don't care about the numbers, I don't care about any of that stuff, but it is about that. It is about you doing your job and doing your mission, and that only comes from you inviting and then sharing. Okay? It's what we do. It's the heart and soul of what we do as a coach. If you were in any other job and you did not hit success club, you'd be fired. So do not hire, fire yourself. To help three people in one month is not hard. It is not hard in any way, shape, or form at all. Okay? So yes, I am totally preaching about to you about this right now because it means that you're not tied into the mission. It means that you are not focused on ending the trend of obesity. It means that you are letting fear get in the way of what we need to do here. And that is where this whole thing all comes out. And so when pe when coaches tell me, oh, I didn't hit success club or it's two days beforehand and they're like, oh, I, um, I tried. No, you let down that mom that couldn't need your help. You know, you let down that coworker at work that's been struggling and has no support at home and all she needs is a friend. Okay, these are people. Those numbers are people. And I want you to stop looking at it as a number of 5 and 10 and 15 and 20 and 19 and write down those people and write down their names. Take a picture of them. You know, put them up like in your calendar um, so you know who it is that you're working with and the lives that you guys are impacting. Okay? Um, all right. My last thing before I go with you guys tonight is this. I want you guys to all be really proud of what you guys are doing as coaches. Okay, that is the one thing. I never want anyone to feel, um, that you can't announce that you're a coach, right? That you are scared to invite somebody and I'm going to try not to cry. Um, what we do is absolutely amazing. You guys, it is absolutely amazing and it is absolutely life changing. And you don't need to have these best incredible systems. You guys don't need to have any of even these trainings, you guys. You just need to understand what we have to do here. You need to understand what the mission is and you need to get past whatever fear it is that you keep telling yourself because you are here to change the world. This is a freaking gift, you guys. This is a gift. 
and your coach gifted it to you and it's up to you to gift it to other people. And there is no other front line. We are the front line. Do you understand that? Like, we are the front line. There is no other. Healthcare is a band-aid, you guys, at this point. Healthcare is a band-aid and the government does not have programs to help with health promotion and disease prevention. So you are out there. When you are posting, you guys, be proud. When you're inviting people to use, to join your challenge groups, to join coaching, you guys, think about what you're doing. Think about the lives that you're here to change. Think about the impact that you are making and never, ever, ever, ever be fearful of that. You guys are proud. I want you guys to realize, stand up and be, I am a Beachbody coach with everything that you have in your being behind that because you're making a difference in the lives of other people. And you guys know what? In this world, that is what we need. We need people to reach out to one another. Okay? That is what this world is missing. It's missing the personality. It's missing the relationships. It is missing it. This is why so many things are happening. This is why you guys see all these bombings and all these shootings and all this stuff happening. It's because there's lost souls out there that nobody told them that they were good enough. Nobody told that little kid when he was growing up that he was going to make it one day and that he was good enough and that he could do things. That's why these things are happening, you guys. And this is what we have the impact of doing as a coach. We have the impact to let people know that they matter and that you care what you care about them. Okay? So I want you guys to be empowered by this message. There's six, seven hundred, I don't even know the number right now. But there's 700 of you guys in this group, 750. Now, we'll just say 700 to make it easy. Okay, there's 700 of you guys in this group, okay? If every single one of you guys helps three people in this group alone, think about that. That's 2,100 people that we would impact in just this group. 2,100 people, okay? Now, think about if you taught this to two of your coaches, the impact that you could make. This is what we do. This is why Success Club is so important. And this is what we have to do with Team Beachbody. It's about each of us grabbing arms with other people and sharing our mission for what it is that we're doing and being empowered of our teams to say, this is what I'm doing. Come along with me and to literally shout it from the rooftops. Because if we don't, there's nobody else in. There's nobody else that's going to do it. Okay? Personal trainers, they're awesome. Yoga instructors, they're awesome. Um, but we have 450,000 Beachbody coaches. And if one, if they all decided to help one person, that we would be able to help 450,000 individuals. And the problem is, is that we probably have 30,000 coaches showing up and working the job. And it's not good enough. And we're not going to see the changes. And our kids' lives are going to be impacted. You guys are going to see it. And so if we don't start now, if we don't get over what it is that we need to do, if we don't get over our self-limited beliefs and the fears and all of that stuff, then we're not going to make the impact. So I want you guys to think about the bigger mission of what you guys are on, the bigger mission of Team Beachbody. Think about that. You invite to your team so we can help more people. Not for your next rank advancement, not for your next success club point, not for any of those things, but because you can teach them the tools that they need so now they can go on and change more lives as well. Okay? So this was a little bit longer than I wanted it to go, and um, I get a little passionate about this subject, but I want to thank you guys all for tuning in with me tonight, and um, I love you guys. I hope you guys are just empowered, and you guys go out there, and you share this message with your teams. It's that, that, that important um, with what it is that we're doing. So, all right. Peace out, everybody. I hope that I get to meet you guys all at Summit, and thanks for sharing the evening with me, all right? Bye, guys.